Motherwaite. Andrew could have gotten the door panel at any lumber yard. Motherway Point was backed up at least in part by a police crime lab. Couldn't be sure the panels were one in the same. It's true the living room has two holes in it. This one I'm pointing to right here, 10 inches from the edge, and this one uh, down here, uh, 12 inches. This one I referred to being 25 from the top, and the uh, second one, 36 from the top. Now, as you open this, there's also, of course, a knob door in this one. As you open this door, there's uh, blood uh, behind the door. The, uh, top, the top hole shows that the bullet was incoming. It fired through the door and hit the brother through the door. The brother fell, he had muscular blood that dried up, but you could see a little bit of it there and a little bit of it on the floor. The brother was shot four or five times, so after they came through the door, they shot him again to make sure he was dead. Mr. Montgomery, uh, Dr. Constantino testified today that Mark Clark could not have struggled after receiving that shot through the heart. Now, in your mind, does this contradict the testimony of Officer Davis, who described a struggle? Uh, yes. It seems to me that that was a very startling thing. We also learned that uh, the bullet, which was in fact recovered from Mr. Hampton's body, uh, was a bullet fired uh, out of a carbine by Officer Davis. So that indicates also that Officer Davis uh, may well have walked into that back bedroom, contrary to his testimony, and fired a shot into the body of Fred Hampton at one point in time or other. There were six of us assigned to the back door. I came up on the back porch. I placed myself to the right of the door. I put my head down enough so I could hear if there was any conversation in the building. I heard people talking in the front, and then I heard a loud uh, shot, sounded like a shotgun. I backed up and kicked the door open. I started in, and before I could get past the threshold, there were three shots fired from the rear bedroom. They were directed directly at the back door uh, as I was coming in. I backed out again. Only by the grace of God, uh, was one of our, or two of our police officers prevented from being killed uh, when they were fired upon as soon as they announced their office and knocking on the door. On December 11, 1969, the Chicago Tribune carried a story that it characterized as an exclusive version from the state's attorney's office. Why was the uh, disclosure made in the Chicago Tribune? Because the, that newspaper, the Chicago Tribune, in my opinion, gave a very balanced fair report of the events that occurred. It has nothing to do with the class of people or the type of people that buy the Tribune as opposed to other papers in the city? Does anybody have a sensible question? Included in the exclusive was a photo carefully circled to show bullet holes supposed to be in the back door. The account that we made public yesterday gives a detailed explanation of what happened in that apartment. Uh, I stand wholeheartedly behind it as absolutely accurate. There is one inconsistency in, well, for example... Uh, I do not intend to quibble about that account. Do you intend to get it the truth? The account that we gave of the events is the truth. One of the four pictures you gave the Tribune had two bullet holes on the right side of what was supposed to be the rear door. Now, Henry has, been, Henry has his lied before if he's going to lie again. That, that hole that he's blown up in the paper is a, is a hole of a nail. I close up to the nail head. Plus a little bit of the door has. Plus the door has. Mm -hmm. Now, you, here you see the large nail heads being pointed out. I have said that uh, we released the pictures. We have not characterized or described uh, the uh, conditions that they portray, other than to say that that is an accurate portrayal of that uh, particular object. Do you know if any of the four pictures they received had portrayed bullet holes in any of the walls? I, I, another photo claimed to show the bullet riddled door across from the bedroom. The officers testified that the Panthers fired into that door from inside their bedroom. In fact, the door in the photo was the bedroom door, and the holes in the door were made by police gunfire at the Panthers. As you can see, the bathroom door is intact. Not only the bathroom door, but the entire wall area is intact. There was a, there was a picture of the uh, inside of the door to the bathroom, yes. 
That door, our reporters discovered, corresponded to one on the front living room adjoining the bedroom. <clears throat> there were holes in the door, and the door was open. They, those holes corresponded to holes that were in the wall adjoining between the bedroom and the living room. And when they stuck a stick through the holes, they all matched up. I have, I make, as I say again, I make no evaluation of the pictures other than to say they, they portray conditions as they existed in that apartment at the time those pictures were taken. This is the door that's supposed to contain numerous marks from a stray shotgun blast and small arm fire, which again was fired by members of the vicious Black Panther Party who are standing in this bedroom here, shooting out into the hallway here. I urge, I urge your inventory of each of these vicious weapons this attack, this attack by the Black Panthers on the police, plus the rep weapons which were recovered uh, at the uh, depot where they were storing them, clearly demonstrates the true character of the Black Panther Party. Nobody, I have never denied that there was no weapons there. As a matter of fact, he would be a fool if he didn't have a weapon there, knowing uh, the, the ferociousness of the pigs, how they just jump out of the cars and, and shoot you down, how they knock on your door and blow 19-year-old uh, sister's head off with shotguns, how they kill two brothers in, in one week. Yeah, he's, and as a matter of fact, everybody that, that, that's concerned should have a, a something in their home to protect themselves because Hanrahan is a mad man. Mr. Hanrahan, can you tell me why your officers did not try to use tear gas? Isn't this the usual procedure to flush someone out of a building? Our officers uh, use the means necessary to effect the search uh, and to present, prevent themselves from being killed upon after they were killed after they were fired upon. Isn't it true that you usually use, your men usually use uh, tear gas in situations such as this? And why didn't they use it this time? No, that is not true. It is not true? They came with a murder on their mind, see? Even if they wanted to take somebody to jail, it would be a simple matter of just shoot some tear gas and just throw everybody yeah, out right, right on. This is where our chairman had his brains blown out, and he uh, lay in his bed, sleeping at 4.30 in the morning. Someone came into the room. Started shaking the chair. The chairman, chairman, wake up. Pigs was laughing. And I saw bullets coming from it looked like the front of the apartment, from the kitchen area. They were pigs to shoot. And uh, about this time, I jumped on uh, top of the chair. He looked up. Looked like all the pigs burst it entrance way to the bedroom area, back bedroom area. Mattress is just going, you can feel bullets going into it. I just knew you be dead, everybody in there. Um, when he looked up, he looked up, he didn't say a word, he didn't move, except for moving his head up. He laid his head back down to the side like that. He never said a word, he never got up out of bed. A uh, person was in the room, he kept hollering out, stop shooting, stop shooting. We have a pregnant woman or a pregnant sister in here. At the time, I was eight and a half to nine months pregnant. My baby was to be delivered in two weeks. Pigs kept on shooting. So I uh, kept on hollering out, finally they stopped. They pushed uh, me and the other brother by the uh, kitchen door and told us to face the wall. Heard a pig say, he's barely alive, he'll barely make it. I assume they were talking about Chairman Fred. But then they started shooting the pig, they started shooting, up, shooting again. I heard the sister scream. They stopped shooting. The pig said, he's good and dead now. Kids running around laughing, they were really happy, you know. Talking about Chairman Fred today. Saw Chairman Fred again. Inflammatory statements and false charges against our office have been made by spokesmen for the Black Panther Party and others, despite the fact that the speakers had no reliable knowledge about the occurrence. Well, the best account that I can give is uh, the uh, room that I was in and the, the, the actions of things surrounding me personally, you know. First thing I remember when I woke up was uh, a knock on the door, and it was only a matter of seconds. In fact, I say it was 
less than five seconds that I heard, you know, shots. Now, the thing that struck me was that I not only heard shots, but I can uh, see plaster coming out of the walls of the, out of the walls in my room. So this, I knew the bullets were coming through the room that I was in. I stepped over and I put the machine gun still on single fire and I started from the left side of the wall coming across, watching where the rounds were hitting, and I went over the girl's head, down on the other side of her, and continued fire across this wall. One strange thing about this wall is this. State attorneys can stop a rating pig saying that they fired uh, numerous uh, slugs going up and down, up and down with motion, attempting to avoid hitting the people in the in the apartment here, you notice that all these slugs are on a straight line. You also notice that all were fired at a low level, at about bad level. Next thing I remember is uh, someone, I think it was one of the pigs, told us to come out of the room. But there were still shots being fired. Now, I didn't know at this here time that people had came, were coming through the back door, but I took it that shots were being fired in the back of the house and at the front of the house. And, uh, you know, they, they were all coming through, through the walls. The walls were nothing but plastic boards. You know, a bullet come through the front of the house and would go all the way through the, out the back. Somebody told us to get out, but I remember we were so afraid and bullets were still coming that we remained on, on the floor. I heard another pause, and then one of the pigs told us that if we don't come out, he was going to put something in there that would really get him out. The idea came to my mind they were going to shoot tear gas or something in there. We realize that there are still some people remaining in the front bedroom. We don't know whether they're in here or not. So I plead, and I can you, I beg them to come out. Please come out with your hands out, throw out your weapon. But the next thing I heard was a barrage of shots, real fast. And, uh, you know, we were hit this time. I started with the gun, still on single fire, being very careful and watching where each round hit on the wall. I walked them around uh, the girl sitting on the bed and brought it all the way across the wall again. As I was doing this, Officer Davis was stepping up and he starts firing across the wall from right to left. I put one shot in the door. I put a short burst with the machine gun on automatic fire into that closet. I fired four or five shotgun blasts into the bedroom. The second form still coming up caught a blast as the gun came further across the room. They told me, uh, you know, to get up and walk. And I told them I couldn't. And then they, I think they hit me or did something. They told me they would kill me if I stayed there. So I kept trying. I managed, you know, to get up. And uh, I made a little hop. And I finally I hopped out, you know. I am taking the word of our policemen uh, over what we understand is supposed to be a version provided by a defense attorney and by the occupants of the apartment. I was hit five times. I was hit uh, two times in the stomach, one time in the leg, and I was hit grazed in each hand. Yeah. This is just a scar. You know, I had to have a section of my colon taken out because of the infection. And I was shot over here. I expect the general public to recognize the quality of these men's work and the political consequences can take care of themselves. Of course I don't plan to resign. You can see the story every time uh, from newspaper to newspaper, from channel, one channel to another channel, he's had to change the story as we've brought up facts, truth about the evidence uh, that he reporters they have given out, such as the nail head, such as the uh, bullet holes and whatnot in the walls. And it's, it's only my conclusion is that Hanrahan, if he wanted to give an objective opinion about what happened here uh, that morning, he would have to come to this apartment and find out because he's doing and a whole lot of subjective analysis because the man haven't uh, come to the apartment to find out what really did go down in the apartment. And we invite Hanrahan here to see for himself the evidence that uh, uh, we have shown to the masses of people and to the public. 
No, I have not been at the scene. Based on available evidence, namely the physical condition of the home and its contents, the physical condition of the remains of Fred Hampton, the search warrant was merely a subterfuge, and the mission of the police was to murder and maim. This blatant act of legitimatized murder strips all credibility from law enforcement. In the context of other acts against militant blacks in recent months, it suggests an official policy of systematic repression. The pious statements of State's Attorney Hanrahan concerning the brave response of the police against the vicious Panther attack and his allusion to the grace of God concerning the sparing of the policemen only makes the situation more macabre and terrifying. As an individual, are you convinced that the official version is a lie, that it is a case of murder? Personally, I am. Anyone who went through that apartment and examined the evidence that was remaining there could come to only one conclusion, and that is that Fred Hampton, 21 years old and a member of a militant, well-known militant group, was murdered in his bed, probably as he lay asleep. It seems very clear to us that he was assassinated, and the police officer who did that assassination then walked away from it, then walked away from it and said to other people, Bobby Rush is next. Now, all of you who know Bobby Rush know that he is the Minister of Defense of the Black Panther Party and also one of our clients. And all of you also, I assume, know that Bobby Rush's apartment was broken into last night, and also of him, he's still alive because he was not in the apartment. Do you think if you had been in your apartment yesterday, you would have been shot by police? Yes, I would have been murdered. I still think there's a, a great possibility of uh, people trying to murder me. All the moves uh, in the past, the mischief has been on the part of the police. Uh, they've murdered Fred Hampton. Uh, they're out to murder me. It's like they'll murder anybody that's black in this country. Do you Bobby, think there's going to be retaliation then by the Panthers? There, w there won't be any retaliation by the Panthers. I think that the uh, time will come when the people themselves will uh, take the power that belongs to them to their hands and move uh, uh, to guarantee life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We will not be forced underground until the, uh, until the people, we really feel satisfied that we've done our duty, uh, performed our duty to uh, educate the masses of the people to the injustices that the power structure inflicts upon poor people in this country. All the uh, mass demonstrations that young people uh, endorse that this is happening right now. Bobby, what's the next move for you personally? Uh, I haven't, my, I'm, there's no personal thing anymore. I'm a people's man, so I do whatever the people decide. There's nothing personal about it whatsoever. And uh, the Panthers uh, will be there to save the people in the hands. Okay, thank you very much. Of course, numerous people have attempted to make formal and informal investigations with a report by the grand jury for the Federal District Court in the Northern District of Illinois. Then I quote, this report contains the findings of the grand jury after hearing nearly 100 witnesses and considering over 130 exhibits, including police records, photographs, moving pictures, transcripts of testimony before other bodies, voluminous investigative and scientific reports, and reports of investigative interviews with over 100 potential witnesses who were not called. And of course, among the main witnesses before the federal grand jury were the 14 raiders in the apartment, the police officers who were assigned to the state's attorney's office. The report tells us, contrary to some of their testimony prior to the grand jury proceedings, the report tells us that at 4 a.m. on December 4, Sergeant Grove briefed the 13 assembled officers and told them the location of the raid and that Panther arms were involved. Or that uh, they were Blank Panthers? No, we didn't. We just knew that, or we were informed that there were guns and uh, contraband in the building. Did you have information that indicated that Fred Hampton might be there? Not to my knowledge. You just knew that there were guns and uh, possibility of that these may, may have been Black Panthers? All we knew is there were guns in there. At this point, uh, it appears that uh, the people who uh, are deceased were in the gun battle. Oh, they were definitely in a gun battle. I mean, they were firing at police? Yes, sir. We saw the shots coming out of the two bedrooms. Sergeant Groth, of course, from the beginning, claimed, along with his fellow officers, that a shot had been fired by a young Panther woman in the far corner of the living room door as the officers entered the door. The report, however, explains the impossibility of this 
account given by the officers. Reading again now from the report from page 181, it says, Gross, Davis, Jones, and Gorman, those are all officers, all insist that a shot was fired by Brenda Harris at them as they came in the door. None of them could explain what had become of this shot, and it is not possible to draw a line from the southeast corner of the living room where Harris was said by Davis and Gross to be on the bed holding the gun, out through the living room door, the entrance hall door, and the outside door. There are no holes in the west wall of the apartment. Officer Carmody, when you knocked on the door, what happened? Well, I didn't actually knock. I heard our officers at the front uh, announce their office and shots fired. Uh, so I kicked in the back door, and as soon as the door opened, uh, I could see uh, shots being fired at us at the back door. Do you have any idea how many shots were fired? Uh, quite a few. I have no idea. Do you have any idea over how long a period the gun battle ensued? It seemed like an hour to me. Of course, the Raiders would have us believe that they approached the apartment in a gentlemanly fashion. They were attempting to save human life. They knocked on the door and they announced their purpose. They fired no shots until they were fired at. They called for a ceasefire on at least three different occasions. Thereafter, three times, Sergeant Groth ordered all his men to cease firing and told the occupants to come out with their hands up. Each time, one of the occupants replied, shoot it out. And they continued firing at the police officers. By their own testimony, they admit that for 12 minutes, for 12 solid minutes in those early morning hours, there was gun firing in that apartment. And yet the federal grand jury concludes that only one possible shot could have come from a Panther weapon. And that shot could have come through the door by a man who had just been shot in the heart. They would have us believe that even though there was only one Panther shot, they called for a ceasefire on three different occasions and didn't get it, so they continued their firing. The great variance between the physical evidence and the testimony of the officers raises the question as to whether the officers are falsifying their accounts. Those officers fired 99 shots through the walls of an apartment where they knew people were sleeping. Murder is defined in Illinois as follows. A person who kills an individual without lawful justification commits murder if, in performing the acts which cause the death, he knows that such acts create a strong probability of death or great bodily harm to that individual or another. Federal grand jury comes to its conclusion. Unquestionably, the raid was not professionally planned or properly executed. And the result of the raid was two deaths, four injuries, and seven improper criminal charges. In spite of those conclusions, the report then goes on to say, the physical evidence and the discrepancies in the officer's accounts are insufficient to establish probable cause to charge the officers with a willful violation of the occupant's civil rights. I want you to know that I want you to think. If you ever think about me, and if you think about me, niggas, and if you ain't gonna do no revolutionary act, forget about me. I don't want some, I don't want myself on your mind if you're not gonna work for the people. Like we always said, if you actually make a commitment at the age of 20, and you say, I don't want to make that commitment on this, because for the simple reason that I'm too young to die, I want to live a little bit longer. What you did, you did already. You have to understand that you have to pay the price of peace. If you dare to struggle, you dare to win. If you dare not to struggle, then goddamn it, you don't deserve to win. Let me say peace to you if you're willing to fight for it. Let me say it in the spirit of liberation. I've been gone for a little while. At least my body's been gone. You ain't got to see after me. At least my body's been gone for a little while. But I'm back now, and I believe that I'm back to stay. I believe that I'm going to do my job, and I believe that I was born not to die in a car wreck. I don't believe I'm going to die in a car wreck. I don't believe I'm going to die from sitting on a piece of ice. 
I don't believe I'm going to die because I got a bad heart. I don't believe I'm going to die because of lung cancer. I believe that I'm going to be able to die what I was just the thing that I was born for. I believe that I'm going to be able to die high off the people. I believe that I will be able to die as a revolutionary in the international revolutionary protest struggle. And I hope that each one of you will be able to die in the international protest revolutionary struggle and be the living. And I think that struggle is going to come. Why don't you live for the people? Why don't you struggle for the people? Why don't you die for the people?